Oke ya. Test, test. Test. Yeah, I can hear you. I can still hear you. Hey everyone. Okay, David, Jessica, why are you here? Is this because of, of the document or? I've never seen you before in, in this call. Yes. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so I, yeah, so I, <laughs> I thought I'd join because uh, I saw uh, Arthur's uh, post. And I thought, yeah, um, community driven white paper about observability. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up. I'm interested Ooh. in it. It's a connection loss. And um, market data connection re established. Oops. Uh, and and then uh, to, in the, just in the previous meeting that I had with Jessica, I said I'm going to go here now, and then uh, she thought it was also a good idea to join. So cool, here we are. Yeah, um, we're from Profile Labs. Okay, nice. Uh, so I I think we have enough people. Let's let's get started. Um, uh, so Arthur, I took the liberty of moving that one segment up front, but we can also move it back. It's just uh, we we shouldn't we shouldn't spend ages on it, but on the other hand, we shouldn't not talk about anything else either. I still maintain it's way too early to uh, to split stuff into a separate call, but uh, like synchronization on on what the next work packages packages and such are make absolute sense, um, your choice. You can also just move it back uh, at the end, but we should actually try and get some time for this as well. Okay, uh, sorry if I have background noise, just continue. Uh, I'm not really sure uh, if we have on the next meetings, we can have a, a more time to discuss that, but if open telemetry due diligence continues to take like several weeks, I, I'd prefer to have a separate meeting. Ideally, it should just be finished. <laughs> um, so yeah, but that's not the direct answer. Uh, do you? OK, so um, let me let me rephrase. If if I time box you to five minutes and you do your pitch and your synchronization and your everything, and then we get going on the due diligence, uh, so we don't have to. You don't have to wait. So let's let's time box you to five minutes and let's accept my own suggestion. Also, for all the new joiners, uh, I put the document into chat. Uh, please write yourselves in if you want. You don't have to, but you're hardly invited to. I love seeing so many people. Um, this is great. So um, Arthur, kick it off, uh, and I'll time box you. Okay. So, do we start so, with? Yeah, right. yeah, go on, Arthur. Uh, first of all, thanks for everyone who uh, volunteered to work in the white paper. It's really awesome to see so many people uh, willing to, to help us. Let me share my screen. OK. 
Okay. That's it. Uh, I plan to have a, a call really similar to the sync of observability. We have uh, attendees, questions, what we want to, to, to talk about. Uh, many people have uh, contacted me uh, saying that they want to help, but they have no idea how to do so. Uh, so bring your questions, ask away, and we can talk together to, to get it going. Another thing that I wanted is we have a lot of suggestions, and a lot of things to reveal, and those calls, uh, we can do reveals uh, asynchronous, asynchronously uh, through the document, but I don't like the idea of uh, deleting, accepting or rejecting suggestions without being loud about it. So I don't want anyone to open the document one day and see that suggestions just disappeared or I don't know. I, I, I like to be transparent and be, make, make sure everyone knows uh, the direction that we are following. So on this calls, I expect to just go through all the suggestions, talk about it, see if it goes in, if it goes out, and yeah, that's it. Uh, I was planning to do a doodle to decide on schedule and what time we should do it, but I didn't have time to do that. Uh, I can do that uh, by the end of the meeting. So I, I want, I wanted to ask people, uh, do you think these uh, meetings are going to be useful or should we just stick to asynchronous communication? Yeah, that's it. So then let me uh, reply for the last point. For Historically speaking, it's always risky to just have more meetings. Um, in particular, of course, you will run into issues with other people maybe not having the time. Maybe they uh, they made time for this time slot, blah, 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 blah. So um, I would strongly uh, encourage you to, uh, to define work packages to work on the mailing list or in Slack um, to to make it possible for people to, uh, to, to chip in. Myself, I'm deliberately not doing it, so uh, work gets more distributed, but um, I, I, I look forward to, to actually working on this as well. Um, but yeah, I, I would strongly encourage you to do things asynchronously, because um, you will just run into scheduling issues no matter how you do it. And you also see a lot easier who is driving which parts of the discussion of the document, blah, 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 which enables you to, um, to travel more easily who is doing what and, and who delivers how quickly. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and I think it's fine to have like a meeting for reviewing the, the work and synchronizing and we can use seek observability for that if there is a time. Uh, but especially around the suggestions, uh, Arthur, maybe you can just limit the permission to yourself and allow others to just put suggestions into the document so everyone can collaboratively, you know, review it. And then you will be the blocker. So ho hopefully you will have time to be on those kind of meetings and, and kind of apply, maybe have uh, more people than just you. But uh, yeah, that would be nice to to get track. And maybe also, you know, be careful because there could be, you know, um, malicious attempts, whatever, as well. So just limiting permission would be would be necessary. Richard, a, a wild suggestion or idea, given that we only meet every two weeks, if we change the cadence to every week, then we would have an additional time window, or is that too much? At least until, you know, everything is sorted. The thing... <laughs> Again, uh, unless we actually need the time, we should be extremely worried of having interactive in-person real-time meetings. Um, and historically, we, we had even the problem of the work uh, queue being too empty. Um, but now that we have a lot more people here and now that, that we have uh, more work packages starting, maybe we will actually get to the inverse. Um, 
I, I think the uh, open telemetry due diligence is a little bit of an outlier. So let's try and see how, how uh, yeah. Also, we're at time. Um, we're actually 30 seconds over. <laughs> Just one, one comment. Uh, so if you are not doing those meetings, uh, everyone, who has any doubts, just ask away. I, I'll try to, my best to answer everyone. Yeah. And for everyone, again, um, Slack and, and uh, the mailing list are the official channels of communication. You can also find them in the document, uh, which is just above the um, thing. Um, and you also, uh, like, um, where you just wrote yourselves in. So, um, please subscribe to the mailing list and or come to Slack because then you have this asynchronousness communication. Moving on. <laughs> uh, Steve, you want to share your screen? Sure, why not? You don't have to, I can also do it both works. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, so I, I wrote a point of order. Uh, I'll just read it out, at least paraphrasing. Um, and everyone who only came here for the uh, for the document by Arthur, um, you can also reclaim your time because um, we will be talking about this uh, for the rest of the call. I think um, I don't think we will, or I think it's clear to everyone that we will not be finding a full consensus on uh, on the complete due diligence document. So instead of both sides trying to convince each other. I would suggest trying to focus on, on finding what can be um, points of agreement and where we simply note down two, two different views and then uh, hand this to TOC because they need to be, make the final call about this anyway. Um, that being said, as more and more people come into this call and add more points of view, I'm also extremely worried of just shutting down uh, any, any discussions as they ensue just try and be mindful of, of not going completely circular. Um, it's it's not an easy balance um, to, to strike. So yeah, let's dive in. All right, so I guess given that we were on three, we have points one and two where we reach consensus, then we had a break. Uh, so do we want to address the comment on the break and then try to tackle three and four? Uh, what would be the best way here? The elephant in the room is obviously that uh, that uh, Bartik put the statement uh, on top and there was discussion on the, on the thing. <sighs> yeah, so I guess my recommendation for that or my proposal would be, what if we throw that into another Google Doc like the uh, original work that Bartik did on the due diligence? Uh, and that can be linked in here as well, uh, but I'm fearful that we'll rabbit hole on that for the entire conversation. Uh, ideally making progress, I think, on the sections here where there are, are comments directly related, and then we can discuss how we want to handle the additional feedback things in the separate docs uh, separately. I'm not against it. I'm just noting that we did try this in the past and ran into the into the same discussions, just distributed amongst the document as opposed to having uh, this discussion in in a distinct uh, block and then being able to to get rid of no not to get rid of it, but basically to acknowledge it and then just move through the rest at pace. We can try both. Um, yeah, we can try both. So Steve, I mean, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe, yeah, from my side, I would just make sure that, you know, uh, I mean, we don't repeat, yeah, um, in cycles. So we make sure we, uh, we acknowledge that, you know, those are the statements that are there. And to every question that says, hey, uh, is there any concerns in design or incubation or like whatever, I have the statement that, yeah, I have concerns. I have three major, I kind of reduce them to like, you know, bare minimal to not spend time on details, which are less actionable uh, as we noticed like last week. Uh, but there are like three major points that uh, I don't think we agreed. So that's why we propose to just put it on the top. So anyone else who is looking on this doc, it has a clear vision what uh, Seek Observability is thinking about that. So. I don't well, want hang on, hang on. Yeah, hang on. That, that as well. That's an important thing. So I, I don't necessarily have a strong opinion if we put that in a separate document or not, but we should be 100% certain to make sure that if whoever reads that, 
does not get the impression that the sick observability has that opinion. It is one opinion. And the way it is phrased, where we say, you know, we and our and so on, whoever reads that in the TOC might get the impression that this is the opinion of the sick observability. And it's not my opinion. So that's something so, else. Yeah. Also, can this actually just be like an again, like maybe, okay, so maybe not having a separate document, but like this is for incubation. And so maybe the final thing of this page would be like, what are the like takeaways, right? Like, okay, like, you know, we highlight, this is one person's opinion. That was the main bullet here, there. And then this is the other people's set of opinion. And then after we can break it down there and have it at the end as a summary, right? Because by going in, so there's two things that could impact, like that impacts this project negatively is one is having such a negative statement in the beginning already predisposes people to look at this under that bias and then view things there versus viewing, right? Like this is supposed to be looking at all the information and then gathering an opinion on it. So if we have that at the end of it, then people can go so go through it too. And then after say, you know what, I like, you know, these are the different like people's different conclusions. I either agree with them or don't. But if you have the conclusions up front, right, that shapes everyone thinking to think that's the only way to do it and only way to go forward. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> okay. I think uh, yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's actually understandable. I think we are negotiating, we are negotiating on you know, how it will look um, on further steps when TOC is looking and is that, and we are negotiating, you know, how, yeah, how likely whatever outcome it will be. And I think I'm happy with whatever um, will be discussed this. I just, I just want to add one, one more thing is that, yeah, I, okay, that's, that looks like my only opinion, but I gather that from the SEEK observability members as well. And I understand, Michael, you are a member as well, but there are members with, uh, you know, that would agree with my point of view. So I wonder, yeah, um, how we say what SIG observability actually thinks in this case. So then- So I think the consensus is the markings in green on this document. If people want to form a different opinion, I mean, I think it's fine to have that document and maybe everyone that's willing to put their name on it can, but anyone that doesn't, like you can't just have a blanket we, I think like people should either own up to that they agree with that point of view or not. Right. I guess and that's how, the main point. Yeah, we are very the... explicit. Go on, Michael. Sorry. Well, you can, we can, for example, I'm just saying one way to go about it is if we indeed take whatever is at, at the top, which at least you put together. I mean, I'm not saying that you're the only one, but the we and our feels like it's inclusive and at least I do not subscribe to that. Yeah. Um, and let, let people essentially say like, you know, yes, I, I agree with that part. And we already said that in the, in the, in the agenda, right? There won't be an, an, an overall consensus on that. And that's perfectly fine, right? It's, it's okay to say, I support that view or not. Uh, let's just not make this blanket statement, we, and then everyone gets the feeling it's the entire SIG observability that has this feeling or this view. I'll try to unwrap this because I fear we are about to go in a circle again. Um, I, I fully agree with Michael's point that um, that the we needs to be uh, specified or removed into an I. As far as I can see, it's not a singular opinion, but there is actually a little bit of a split within SIG observability. So Steve's suggestion of, uh, of putting names into specific uh, areas or under specific statements can make sense or most likely does make sense. Um, of course, then we can uh, move on functionally or, or uh, not functionally, uh, Organizationally speaking, um, unless there is consensus, we won't mark it as green. And historically, for the three other due diligence documents which we did, uh, we put the summary on top. So I would, I would, I, I mean, I get consensus point on on uh, this potentially um, being being the rest of the document being read under the lens of of having that statement above. On the other hand. That is precisely the intention as far as I gather. So, um, and as it is not an opinion, and it is like, I, I, I am the first to agree that- It is an uh, opinion, opinion though. Let's be clear, this is all very, like, unfortunately we all have to admit software engineering is very opinionated, even though we are all trying to be very technical and unbiased about it, but it is opinionated. Yeah, it is very subjective. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, so so I'll, I'll make another proposal to that, right? I mean, I think Bartok putting together a proposal on like thoughts and gathering from other other people is perfectly fine. Why don't we do the same thing on the hotel side? Maybe the GC or TSC or whoever wants to get involved, we could work on a response that also gets added to the summary to the top. Um, that yeah. could be a way of kind of reaching a compromise of seeing alternative Definitely. views. That makes absolute sense precisely the, yes, um, and, and just so sorry, kind of, not, 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 the bottom. I think that was, I think Bart, Bartek was saying that was fine. And I kind of agree there should be the assessment. And then at the bottom, there can be a section uh, that contains all of this information labeled as to, to who put it in and why they think it's important. And then if we want to have as part of that also, you know, the open telemetry GC just like addressing these concerns. I think that's that's also a reasonable thing to have at the bottom, and I don't think we need to have anything more than that. It's like these are the concerns that were brought up. This is what the project leads say about those concerns, and and that's that's that. I have one minor tweak. Um, if you scroll a bit further up, Steve, please. And that the first sentence, like imagine the whole what whatever is now on, on top, um, is rephrased into not like. I, Bartek, say this, but whoever signs up to that saying like, okay, the group of people who have that opinion, you know, currently it reads, I, Bartek, say, I can't recommend that. And then there is a we. That is kind of like inconsistent, right? Whoever goes behind that should say, okay, here's the group of people who subscribe to that. And already some, some pointed it out in the comments. Pretty straightforward to, to get the, the names there. And having these two positions in there, uh, clearly saying like who is behind uh, what, would at least for me fulfill all the needs there. Then we can move on. I think it's fair to have two two statements. Uh, Steve is absolutely right there. Um, functionally speaking, with my chair hat on, I do not believe that we should be putting any strong statements which which color the rest of the document by design should be put on the bottom. I think they should be part of the summary. But I do think that Steve and uh, is absolutely right that there should not be only one uh, document or statement. There can easily easily be two. That actually makes sense, like a lot of sense. And then we can also um, stop discussing endless details of um, of the thing above and hopefully move through the rest. Um, there's one thing which I found and I need to officially take off my, my uh, chair head for a second. Uh, there's one comment by Steve from today uh, about how open metrics was not released until November 25th of last year. Given that, and Morgan, keep me honest, um, open metrics and open census have met in 2017 in 2018, in 2019, I was in a majority of the cause of the first half of open telemetry uh, metrics of the first half of 2020. I don't think that is a fair statement in particular, since if you go back to 2016, the public communication of open telemetry and Prometheus from day one was, if you do Prometheus, then you do everything right for open metrics. If we look at the breaking changes of open metrics versus Prometheus, A, timestamps are, are different. They're not millisecond anymore, they're seconds. And uh, timestamps are explicitly discouraged within Prometheus. And B, you have a mandate, uh, you underscore create as underscore total is now mandatory for counters and, and transparently done by, by the instrumentation library. That's it which is also why Datadog, for example, was able to just take that code base of open metrics and just re-implement open metrics in their own thing. So I, with my open metrics head on for the last four years, I have been really trying to get together and we have the same discussions. And if you look at Prometheus WG, you see precisely the same discussions we had back in 2017. And again, Morgan, keep me honest, please. It's like the only major two things which I saw progress are A, that this maximum guarantee of 90 days of stability, which was initially the plan for open telemetry is gone. And now we have long-term uh, guarantees for the API, the data model, the wire format and everything, and not this maximum of 90 days. And B, um, the histograms. 
And I, I would ask everyone, because I'm really trying to be fair here, and it's sometimes really hard as chair. I would ask to be ask everyone to be fair in their assessment. And that part is just not true. Objectively, provably true, not an opinion statement of fact. Period, putting the head back on, going to point three. Uh, but, but sorry, but I don't want to shut you down. Like sorry, R Richie, you asked me to keep you honest, but but you mentioned that several things. I wasn't. Which, which one did you want me to keep you honest about? <laughs> yeah, booked into it. Like we 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 had those two day meeting in London back then, and we tried to walk through yeah. all those all the open questions. Yeah, with with Jeremy and and Wagner. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Precisely. So yeah, I I had to get that of my chest course that seems to be something which is recurring and it's just not factually correct and everything about about how prometheus metrics work have been in the open since 2014 when it was stable and hasn't changed since which point on the doc are you replying to um i can put it into the chat just a moment and um, reflect here, I, right here this one I feel I have. Oh, that one. Okay, got it. Yes, let me also put it into into chat. Yeah. Um, sorry for that one. It's just that that has become really, really, really tiring and old from my perspective. So, wait, question though, um, since Open Metrics did go up for uh, incubation review, what was the TOC's feedback? Um, currently waiting because they have concerns about our openness because we closed our talks or our, our uh, meetings, which funnily enough we did uh, to maintain the focus on Prometheus. Um, yeah. So it's isn't that kind of addressing the point that it isn't as transparent as no, it's not because the code was open. But if we want to talk about open metrics, we can, but then we stop the due diligence for a second person because then I need to stop wearing the chair hat and I need to reply with my open metrics set on. If we want to do this, absolutely fine because there is massive confusion about the history of, of the projects. Um, the summary is Prometheus has been open all the time in its reference code and it's been in production since 2018 in Prometheus, if you use Python with Prometheus, if you use uh, open metrics uh, for three years now. Yeah. Like, so can, can I jump in here and say, like, I, I can see why these kind of comments are, are totally annoying, uh, Richard. And I think we should stop sniping around like which came first or anything like that. I think that's, that's not remotely helpful. Um, I think the, the focus here is like, is, open telemetry, like trying to support the Prometheus ecosystem, or is it not? And we believe we are trying to support the Prometheus ecosystem. We, yeah. we have a proposal for how we're doing it and we're actively doing it, but it is different from saying, does the project like use open metrics as its internal format? And we're saying like, we're not, but we are trying to support open metrics the way we're trying to support stats D and, and everything else. And we're putting a lot of effort into ensuring that there isn't some work we're doing in the metrics field that's going to make that uh, unfeasible. Right, um, right. And and we are fully committed to that, Richard. As you know, I mean, very uh, you know, very glad you're you're joining in, uh, as well as others from the Prometheus community to make sure that the open telemetry fully supports uh, Prometheus. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I that intention, like that's literally a reason why, why I've been, in particular myself, have been trying to to make this work somehow since yeah. 2017. Yeah. Right, and so, let's, I think we we should just just remove anything that's that's implying that some somehow there's some technicality for why it's right or wrong to support open metrics. Like I don't think that's that's helpful at all. Um, the question is like, what are these communities doing today, and are they trying to work together, and uh, there is, we have our approach. It's fine to have a critique in there, which is saying like, that's fine. You're doing that, but it would be better if you used open metrics internally. I think it's totally fine to, to leave that as a critique. Um, but, but let's not, let's not focus on like the history of these projects and like timelines and stuff like that. Ideally, yeah. And 
You might have seen the roadmap. It's linked there as well, but it does specifically call out both Prometheus and Stats D uh, as being the minimum goal for for metric support in the in the project. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, I could add... talk for hours about like how I I thought at that time. I just I just feel like that that's a good discussion we should have over drinks or something. It's not. It's just not relevant to this work. Yeah, uh, my opinion is that it's very relevant to this work because since I see in so much background that this compatibility stays there and while activity increased to resolve those incompatibilities, I don't see the community have a trust that it will be that quickly done. So if it's so soon, like it's planned to be, I guess some, some discussions we're talking about some May or that some compatibility, um, so not using directly, but like just compatibility will be yeah. there in May um let's wait for that let's see if uh if this is there and then this will be a good point an indication that incubation uh, and adoption there is no essentially concerns for widespread adoption right that's my kind of but, the goal yes but, and, but, Nick, but Nick, at that point you're being so you're not being objective anymore as a right. tech tech lead of the cncf sig you are you are taking sides and <sighs> and that's not acceptable. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking sides of the CNCF and of the uh, cloud native solutions. No, you're and not. That hey, already hey, use. I, hang on, hang on. Time, time, time out, time out. Um, I don't, this isn't, this isn't going to be useful. I just want to step in and I, I actually agree with Bartek in the sense that it is fine to say that we have a plan to fully support Prometheus. This is our timeline. It is fine for Bartek to have a comment on there saying, I think it would be inappropriate to move forwards until uh, we see that work is, uh, is actually completed. Um, we have a, the counter content comment, which is like, uh, we're not releasing metrics until like that is a requirement for us releasing metrics. So we don't think it's a problem, um, but I think it's fine to just have those comments on there. I think that that's the, part where we have the objective reality. This is how open telemetry plans to support Prometheus. That's the objective part. And then we have uh, two divergent opinions on whether that means we're ready for incubation or not. And I, I think we should just ensure that it's uh, the objective part is put into the doc. And then however we're gonna do these, this commentary like at the bottom, we, we put the rest of it there. Um, and, and I do think it is fine for Bartek to have this opinion as as someone working with the CNCF. I don't think he's actually trying to be unfair on this point. It's 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 fine to say that it's like, we just need to clarify there's a difference between opinion and and the actual plan the project has. So if other people wanna make their opinions about our plan, they could do so. Yeah, yeah, good point. Um, and, you know, don't get me wrong, I think still open metrics is not perfect. I have so many features to add there that are required to, you know, like even uh, better iterations on it and, you know, um, kind of improvements. So I would love to, to see community kind of joining efforts and yes. continuing under one specification, not two. Uh, but anyway, like it looks like we are going in this direction, but because it happened to be like three years already that nothing happens. I want to be just extra sure that this is going well and maybe put some, I don't know, there is some kind of motivation to get there sooner as well and, and collaboratively, hopefully that's kind of the intention as well. Uh, but, you know, I have like a bigger question because that's the one point, but the biggest point we are iterating over is that, hey, tracing is stable, but metrics and logging is very kind of barely uh, well, there are certain things that are working, but there is no big adoption there, right? And uh, open telemetry, you are arguing that this is not needed for incubation because this is plan ahead. That was a plan from the beginning, right? So my question to you is that how do we su suppose to kind of fulfill the goal of unified signals if we just have one signal there and we, we don't have a proper data models, you know, designed that will actually um, allow us to even, um, you know, kind of understand if this solution is even achievable, if we can even unify this under a single deployment, because those signals have different characteristics of, as well. So that's kind of my point why I don't see adoption of everything and why I, I feel it's important that all the signals are 
at least the spec spec you know specifications and then you know APIs are there or like sorry network protocols in my sense. And, and I, kind of, I, this is yeah please um, because no, I, I, don't I, I agree with that. I, I'm sorry to cut you off. I think because no, no. I feel like everyone on the call is like aware of this, but I I actually agree that is that is a totally valid opinion to have, uh, and uh, it's fine to have that expressed. I just want to make sure that's clear. Uh, I think to, to answer your question from the open telemetries project side, we have done a lot of experimental work, like a significant amount, including running this stuff in production for a long time in open census. And I would point to um, the work we've done around stability and backwards compatibility and how we add signals. The work that I think is relevant to incubation is that we have a plan for how stability works and how um, new functionality is integrated uh, without um, affecting the stability of what's already out there. Uh, that to me is really important work that we did to ensure when we say to people, uh, tracing is stable, you can, you can depend that you will get no breaking changes related to tracing in the future. Um, at the same time, we're developing metrics with that in mind. So, so that's baked into the architecture of the project and it's in the spec. So, um, but again, I think these are, these are two, the factual part is uh, tracing is stable, metrics and logging are still experimental. We have, um, we have a stability and support uh, roadmap that describes how we, we manage all of this from an architectural point of view. Uh, and then at the bottom, we have opinions. Open Telemetry Group thinks it's fine because we have plenty of prior art that says it's going to be fine. And uh, Bart, maybe others say, yeah, but like we should, uh, the bar for incubation as opposed to graduation should be that these are complete. Like, I, th I think it's fine to, to have those as opinions at the bottom because they're both valid opinions. Uh, the TOC can look at those and decide whether they think the bar is for incubation versus graduation and whether this is like fine for incubation, but we're not gonna graduate unless we really do it right, or uh, this is not ready for incubation. Yeah, first, first set, yeah, I'm happy with that. So maybe we can, I don't know how we're going to uh, follow this up by actually doing this work. I think maybe Bart, you could do a pass at like, moving this to the bottom, maybe, or Richard as the chair. I'm not sure who should be tapped to, to reorganize this doc. I'm super careful not to touch anything, any wording, unless I'm in suggestion mode and or in, in the actual um, uh, call where everything is, is seen while, while we do it. Uh, while the discussion was ongoing, I put two things into the, uh, it's currently in the to-do, but we can just put it into, into summary or whatever. Uh, if you go to the relative top of the document, there's a, a suggestion for two new lines. Um, Techly to put statement of descent into doc and OTEL to put statement of descent into doc. Um, of course, then we have two uh, places where both sides can, can, um, can make their statements. Um, and in for the intent and purpose of, of walking through the rest of the section, both sides can simply say, well, uh, we refer to our document. And then we, we have this and as long, and this is then basically not taken as a consensus position of the SIG. It is just uh, basically pointing to that thing as context of why consensus couldn't be reached, uh, which is not precisely it's not precisely how ITF works, but I, I get to, to pull a little bit of a magic trick because we have uh, TUC behind us or above us or however you want to look at it. So we don't need to declare rough consensus and everything and actually have the ability to, um, to just refer certain bits and pieces to a third party, which is not the case in ITF, but we have that. Uh, um, so let's use it. So unless there's objections, I will put those two in and mark as accepted. And maybe, maybe let's call it summary. Or let's call it statements of descent. 
as to where to put it, um, that's one of the few cases where I actually make a call as as the chair. Um, I strongly believe uh, these things belong at the top to give context. But I also strongly believe that all sides should have their say as long as it's uh, technically or it is valid on a technical level, not technically valid. So unless there is anyone dissenting, I, I will also accept that statement of dissent. Um, just one one point, as I said, I am I'm fine with at the top. If if that's your preference, I don't care too much. But I did put a, a comment on that first paragraph, and I'd like to to see that honored. Um, which where? If you scroll up all the way, where I said in terms of consistency, uh, you to scroll up. Right. This one? Right, because as I said, yeah, first it says like it was... Arctic, and then it says we and ours, and that is just think of it like someone from talk looks looks at that and says like wait, you know, yeah. first it says part, it says our we like what is it right? And let's make it very explicit, very clear. It's not just Bartek's personal opinion. This is you know here are the whatever people that uh, have that opinion. In the also, same way that that auto should clearly call out who is behind that or saying for the auto cheesy or whatever. Yeah, I mean, Richard, again, I would like to complete what I was saying earlier. Um, and then, you know, as to what Michael was also pointing out, I'd like to make a note in the doc that the technical lead for the CNCF SIG observability needs to have a clear neutral. that in the dock. Okay, so for, okay, this is serious. Um, okay, so just to make it clear, um, you're stating that you think that the tech lead has a non-disclosed conflict of interest and as such his assessment is void. Is, is this correct in I, my word? I, I would at least like to note that on the document. I think that's listed because it says tennis creator, Prometheus maintainer. Um, if, if you're thinking about those two, that's literally part of the first sentence. I'm marking yeah, I, under it. I understand, but I, I would like to note that on uh, just, you know, as an observer and participant in this discussion. Oh. Okay, uh, Bartek, are you fine with this? I mean, fine with what? I don't feel, you know, I'm particularly, you know, I, I'm, well, I was not even participating in open metrics or so whatsoever. I'm a user of those things because I'm user of cloud native, you know, open source solutions. And probably most of us are using Prometheus. So all, all of us cannot, you know, state our position. And also we are talking about logging and tracing here. so. I'm not sure what exactly made me, uh, I don't know, too biased, but I would be happy to to consider, I don't know, like, uh, yeah, we can talk about that, I'm not sure. Yeah. No, I just want to note, I just want to note on this document. Uh, but there, about there is, uh, again, I think that you are clearly displaying a conflict of interest. But I am not. Could you elaborate on the pattern of behavior to which you are referring? I mean, again, uh, you can look at the recordings from the last, you know, four discussions that we have had about uh, the project and the incubation process. And I understand that, you know, you have a lot of uh, predetermined, you know, understanding of different projects, but it, it is, you know, again, just in observing I'd like to note that you are, you know, as a technical lead, supposed to be fair and walking through the details step by step quantitatively. And I, I see and observe that, you know, you, you are clearly, you know, bringing up a conflict of interest, which is overshadowing your neutrality as a technical lead. And I would like to note that in the document. With that strength, uh, I think we actually need to bounce this particular question uh, to
to the TOC because if if that like one potential proposal, mm -hmm. Richie and, and others is I mean no, sorry. This Alolita is this a personal statement or is this the assessment of open telemetry as part of the due diligence? I just want to be super careful and precise here because this, no, this is my statement and I would just like to note it. Okay. 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 That makes it easier. Okay. Um, so to follow and just. I'm not sure I'm going to say COI per se, but I, I think my observation in these conversations, not that I've been in all of them, but I'd say I've been in about half. Is just that there's a lot of sort of first person discussion of not um, uh, of the particulars of the integrations or not between various pieces, particularly around metrics, Prometheus open metrics and open telemetry that's that's being made from the standpoint of like the observability TL role part. So I mean, I, whether that's a conflict or not is something that could be interpreted, but I mean, even today, I think you've been referring to your own personal experiences in the sort of actual um, uh, like histories of these projects. And I think that's probably where the grounds would come from, just that you're not approaching it as a third party. It's like you've actually been experiencing this. And I think have probably, I've, and it's fine to, uh, this is well speculation, but I think feeling certain frustrations about it as well that are coming in prior to the discussion of incubation uh, and this review process. So I think that's probably what the grounds would be, as opposed to say, oh, I don't know. I mean, if we um, approach someone just uh, on the overall CNCF TOC who had nothing to do with Prometheus open metrics or open telemetry, and they were to approach this uh, in a sort of more entirely objective way, um, I, I think what Ted said, I would agree with, but I think I personally think that you're completely entitled to have opinions about these things. And in some cases, I think they're very well informed. I would just say that they're coming from a place where you're actually involved with some of the technical conflicts that we're discussing. And it's not that that makes you like a bad person or something. It just means that you're going to come in with some sort of technical bias because you're one of the parties in that negotiation. So I, I want to clarify, it's not like a value judgment. It's just sort of like, almost an objective assessment of your role in some of the technical discussions like historically that are now becoming relevant to this review process. Um, that's how I see it. I, I, don't, I don't really want to weigh in on whether that's literally a conflict or just sort of a complicating factor, but trying to be more precise per Alex's comment, that's kind of how I try to be more precise about it. As, and I'm speaking for myself, not for open telemetry, but I hope that's somewhat like clarifying in terms of where that perspective would be coming from. I think that that makes sense to me, and it's like, uh, for, for for example, when when I hear Richie uh, saying certain things, he always very clearly says, like you know, with the heads, right? You know, this is with my metrics head on or whatever, making very clear from what point of view he says something, and you know, arguably, you know, being chair and tech lead is on, on the same level in terms of responsibility, um, and and in that sense I, I think i agree right we should be very very careful to say like is that my opinion is that as a tech lead is that as a principal engineer at red hat or or tenos creator or whatever yep. um making those things very very explicit both in you know in the course of this recording and in in the document absolutely agree yeah so observation as chair uh, and again being very careful about the heads um I think I'm the first person to agree that there are some handwerkliche verbesserungen, um, improvements in 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 the in the specific style of the document or of of Bartek's statement. I would disagree that the overall behavior is is so strongly on any side of of conflict of interest as to really raise this flag, because if that was the case, I would have done it myself. Uh, I would also like to note, because uh, Ben was referring to emotionality, um, a lot of those calls were emotional on uh, both sides. And I I suspect it's probably not easy for Bartek to be on the receiving side of 
uh, like just now we had four or five different people uh, speak their piece uh, and he is alone more or less. So I can also see how that is not uh, an ideal uh, balance of power. Also, we are at time, but we are probably running over the usual 10 minutes. Um, um, actually, okay. can I chime into that? So one thing like, as like being, I don't think, so you made a comment last week about how like COVID has made things definitely like harder and stuff like that, but that doesn't excuse being rude. Right, and there has been incidents of like our, the interactions in the SIG, especially when it comes to the hotel review, that have been rude. Please like on both sides. Yeah, okay. okay and that's not you... okay. Which one were rude, sorry? Because I, I think that's, that's, you are personally attacking me too much again. And I don't think um, I was rude, but... sorry for, but like, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, at this sorry, point. Sorry, that is not a real apology. Anyways, I, mean, I just want to say that, like, it's not an apology. Let's be very clear. Like, sorry, but is, you know, you say but to actually contradict the statement beforehand. That's not an apology. Yeah, because I don't feel anyway, I, I just want to say. Anyway, I, I think at this point you are, I mean, yeah, I feel <laughs> there's no comment needed. Okay, sorry. We're way over time already. Let's, uh, we, we're, we're deep in territory where, honestly, as a SIP, we shouldn't be. Um, I, I think it's it's fair that uh, Bartek writes down a statement of uh, noting down potential conflicts of interest by listing the various heads which he has, and then the reader or watcher of recordings can make their own assessment of this. Um, I don't think either side was rude, but I would say that all sides have been heated. And honestly, I myself was heated just now with the with the uh, with the November twenty fifth, uh, twenty twenty comment um, and responding to it. Um, so either we point to specific cases and we do this properly, like raise it officially and actually look at it and have other people look at it at specific comments. Or maybe we all try and get the emotions down a little bit um, and, and just work on that document, um, which would be a lot nicer, to be honest. Uh, but I, 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 like some things which have been said are super serious. And if they are meant as seriously, then the, in my opinion, they need to be raised officially. And if they're raised officially, they'll bubble up uh, at, least to T, uh, at least to TUC, most likely to CNCF proper. Um, so then they need specifics. And those can just be comments, right? Like nothing prevents like taking this top thing and adding a comment here and saying, I feel that blah, blah, blah is happening. I think that there's a conflict of interest. Like you can express comments, I think, and that can be taken by the TOC as well. But technically the due diligence is owned by the TOC sponsor, at least per the CNCF incubation guidelines. So I think like putting this into a doc, linking it and handing over the material and let the TOC sponsor decide probably makes the most sense. There is not even a TOC sponsor. I would love to have a distinct person who I can talk to about this. Um, uh, I'm on but that's where this doc is going, right? Sponsor. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, um, I'm on point for getting our TOC sponsor. Um, that should happen in the next week or so because they're reassigning, they're getting more people like the full TOC board on Thursday. And so they'll have actual understanding of what their capacity is. So we should have one by end of week. <clears throat> that would be great, Kristen. We can also short circuit most likely a lot of those discussions. Um, All right, well, I know we're close to, to time. Do we want to try to meet again next week so we can hopefully chip away at some of the sections and or what do people feel? I would honestly prefer that we make progress on the actual document and write down yeah. stuff. Um, I mean, I think- yeah, I'd like to propose- Meeting. I think we're at the fifth meeting for due diligence um, for for open telemetry. So whatever whatever 
curse we are under, we are not really making a lot of progress. Yeah, um, I'd like to propose the following, like the Bartek, if you could put your comment into a doc like you did for the other summary and then link it like we, we talked about in the summary, I, uh, I guess it would go here. That would be great. Uh, and then if if Otel, GC or others want to work on a document as well, that can be prepared in parallel. Ideally, what I'd like to see for next meeting, if at all possible, is that we focus on these sections. At that point, we will have two other documents that already give alternate viewpoints. Uh, and I'm hoping that we can focus all of our efforts on these sections and getting to consensus on these areas without rehashing uh, the differences of opinions that we have. Then. Yeah, and if we get those two statements written down and then acknowledged by the other side, but not necessarily uh, accepted, just acknowledged for existence, and that both sides acknowledge that the other document is not outright wrong, or just based on hearsay and opinion, but with actual like statements, and also whoever wants to support either uh, document puts their name in. And then we can, if we don't reach consensus, we just bounce to, uh, to those two documents, refer to them, and hopefully move. Yeah, so Sounds can we good. try to meet okay. next week? Does that work for folks? I just checked personally. I have a conflict I need to check, but I need to, it's, it's not work related, it's private related. I need to. Does it work for everyone else? No, I would prefer to meet a normal cadence. I spent so much time on it, and the only gratification I got it is personal attack. So I feel we should stick to the to the standard cadence. I have, you know, other duties than just fighting with this. So that's my personal view. So many things can spiral when they get off to the wrong foot and fear, uncertainty and doubt can lead to so much animosity that doesn't need to be there. And I think wouldn't be there um, in other circumstances. I know this from the open telemetry project itself when it was open census and open tracing, uh, there was just a lot of fear and concern that the other party was gonna was going to zig when we wanted to zag and the two things weren't going to work together and it was just going to be this big mess and that led to a lot of um crossfire and escalating into personal attacks and uh it sucked it absolutely sucked and when we did the work to actually get to know each other and uh start started to actually collaborate with each other actively eventually leading to the merging of the project but even before then a lot of that evaporated um and it was just it was just shadows on the wall to begin with and i have not been here through all of these conversations but but i feel like uh i'm experiencing one of these trigger spirals again and it's not possible to to unwind the past or do anything like that but i do think it is possible to to figure out again, how we could move forwards, both personally and professionally. Uh, I'm not going to propose anything because we're at time right now, but I just want to say that, um, you know, I don't, I don't, I've not seen anyone be a complete monster in this situation. I have seen people get hurt by the things other people have said, and that does happen when emotions run high and people don't know each other and there's a lot of trust. But I think these are things that we can potentially move fast but it takes work. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully we can we can get, I actually think what's left to do on this document is, is fairly simple and straightforward, to, to be honest. And I hope we could we can have a session where we can just just move through that. And um, if there needs to be additional work, which I think there does need to be due around uh, just healing and having people have an opportunity to be heard. Uh, I think we should discuss this possibly with the CNCF or, or find a venue uh, in order to do it, because I don't think it's good for us to all walk away from this project feeling wounded uh, by what happened here. I think we should we should do some effort to make that feel better. 
but I think we should set aside some time to do that. That isn't, uh, it isn't in the time we want to spend to, to just get the last bits of this doc uh, off our plates. Because I think everyone wants to get this off their plates at this point. So if we can do that asynchronously through just finishing the docs and email, I think that's great. Uh, if we can't, and we do need to have one more discussion, let's try to, to have a very clear agenda and, and keep it short and sweet. So we can follow up uh, through Slack or through email or through another channel. Yeah, yeah, and please feel free to ping me on the um, on Slack channel or on uh, CNCF link uh, email, CNCF email list, whatever. So, yeah, I'm 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 actually working better even asynchronously. So please, uh, yeah, let's communicate more maybe asynchronously as well. We are at time uh, and the agenda is set and we need to walk through a document live because as we cannot have consensus on it, but this regarding those nits, um, we have met for nine months now since September. And I think Ted just said the best thing on all of the calls ever combined. So thank you. Okay, thanks. See you all on the internet. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I'm still reading the comments here in the chat. Hi, uh, Arthur, are you still there? Oh, frozen. Okay.